I've played pretty much every trading card game under the sun and moon, but in my opinion, the Pokemon trading card game has some of the best looking holo foil cards of all time. Over the past two decades, they've gone through so many changes, prints, forms, and experimentation that it got me wondering, how many different foil patterns have there been in the history of the Pokemon TCG? What first started as a curious question exploded into a massive undertaking. Binder after binder, category after category, trading and collecting, and it turns out, depending on how strict you are with the categories, there are give or take 70 different types of hollows out there. Let's check it out. Today's video is brought to you by our returning partner, ExpressVPN. I'm always happy to continue working with them because they provide a simple, secure, and top-rated VPN service that I continue to use every day at home. With just the click of a button, using a virtual private network masks your IP to keep your data secure, keep your data private, and let you access region-locked content from all over the world. If you're like me in the current COVID-19 situation and stuck at home, using a VPN to change your region and view more streaming content is a lifesaver. A huge show I've been watching right now is the currently airing The Last Dance, a huge documentary with brand new footage and stories about Michael Jordan and the 1990 Chicago Bulls team. Right now in the US, this show is only airing on cable TV, but if we take a trip over to Canada, which took three seconds, it turns out that The Last Dance can be streamed straight from Netflix right now internationally. If you're interested in trying it for yourself, you can get an additional three months free with our exclusive link here at expressvpn.com slash thejwits. And that's also in the description. Hopefully you enjoy binging some new shows. Okay, quick ground rules before we begin. This list is by no means definitive. There are so many obscure categories of cards out there that I'm sure I missed something, but this should be a pretty comprehensive look at the entire history of the Pokemon TCG. I tried to only focus on cards that did things unique with foil patterns, and I tried to group similar foil patterns where possible. Also, I decided to stick with the internationally released cards only with one minor exception. Japan has an entire world of different foils, and I just don't own enough Japanese cards to catalog them all. And finally, not every card I show today is going to be in mint condition. My wife is a collector of cards, so hers are in great condition, but because I played with mine most of the time, there might be a couple of scratches here or there, and I'm sorry that you gotta see it. We have a huge history of cards to go over today, so let's sit back, relax, and start where it all began in 1999. Our first major pattern is the star pattern that you'll mostly see from the first three iconic sets, Base, Jungle, and Fossil. Not only is this super nostalgic to see because it's the first Pokemon foil pattern I ever knew, but I also love it because I feel like it's one of the few styles that truly looks holographic. As you tilt the card around, the stars give the illusion of jumping out forward beyond the art. Starting with base set 2 in the year 2000, we started to see this new foil pattern consisting of dots and the occasional swirl, which I believe matched the Japanese foil pattern at the time. This main pattern was used for over a decade, stretching all the way up to Call of Legends in 2011, making it by far the most common one today. Here's a base set Charizard side by side with the base set 2 version, where you can see some of the major differences. The dawn of the 21st century also gave us one of the most iconic holo cards of all time, Ancient Mew. This card had a featured role in the second Pokemon movie, it's the first card to feature foil across the entire surface, and it's the only card I've got today that also features foil on the backside as well. And speaking of movies, we've also got the third movie promo, Entei, which was the first card we had seen up to this point that had its foil pattern in reverse, over the outside of the card instead of inside the art box. There was also a Pichu promo that did the same thing around this time. Starting in the Neo era of the Pokemon TCG, we started to see our first special patterns, which is a category I'm using for unique ultra rare and secret rare cards. The Shining cards were our first look at shiny Pokemon in the TCG, and they featured foil just over the character image and nothing else. Over 15 years later, we'd see this specific style of Shining cards return in Shining Legends. Here's the only Japanese card type I'll be talking about today, the Owner's Pokemon vs. series. This gold and silver themed set is one of the very few that we never got internationally at all. 
I'm barely including it on today's list because it features a small unique pattern with the foil, giving us that tiny shiny VS in the lower left corner. Starting with 2002's Legendary Collection, Wizards of the Coast took a page from Magic the Gathering and began officially introducing reverse holo cards into the Pokémon TCG, allowing any card, common or rare, to get a special reverse foil. This first pattern is absolutely wild. So wild that many players actually confused them with counterfeit sticker cards that were shared around the late 90s and early 2000s. Legendary Collection is also the last time that we'd see the classic stars pattern return. I find it especially interesting because it allowed some of Team Rocket's dark holo cards to receive this foil pattern for the first time. Here's a Legendary Collection Blastoise, side by side with its original Team Rocket print. The next series of cards, the e-reader sets, would give us a much simpler style of reverse holo. A basic mirror or refractor-like surface, much more similar to what you'd see with Magic the Gathering foil cards. Similar patterns have been used over several sets, including the early EX era, the Diamond and Pearl era, HeartGold SoulSilver, and even the first black and white set. Wizards of the Coast also had a small handful of promo cards, but one of my favorites are these base set style foil basic energy cards. These are the first foil basic energies, and they're one of the styles of energy I used the most when I competed in the Pokémon TCG. And our final Wizards of the Coast era card type is the Crystal Pokémon. These cards featured regular foil in the picture slot, but also a faint, almost reverse hollow style over the rest of the white border around the card. I'm very lucky Rene collected the E-sets over a decade ago, because these cards have become very expensive today due to their small print run. Moving on to Pokémon's print run of the game comes one of the longest-running special cards, the lowercase Pokémon EX. You'll understand why I'm saying lowercase EX in a couple of years, but for now you can distinguish these powerful two-prize Pokémon cards by their foil silver border. Also, speaking of borders, in 2004 they finally ended e-reader support for Pokémon cards, so newer EX cards no longer have that e-reader strip on the side. Ironically, as we talked about in my old e-reader video, the foil e-reader cards weren't actually scannable. Starting with EX Fire Red Leaf Green, they started doing something weird with reverse foils. They were trying lots of new patterns, and also they aren't even technically reverse. These bonus foil cards are inside of the picture box. This first new pattern is one of my favorites. It's full of tiny energy symbols, and it's what I based my long-running video background card on all those years ago. Fire Red Leaf Green also gave us this special cracked ice foil pattern for the first time with its secret rares. EX cards with the original three legendary birds. For a long time I thought that this pattern was unique to the special Rotom cards, but I learned I've been wrong for over a decade. EX Team Rocket Returns would give us a new feature in Reverse Hollows that stuck around for the rest of the EX era. Set stamps featuring the name of each set on the cards. It also added a new trend which added gold foil over the names of the cards that were also regular foil cards in the set to better help differentiate the two. Shiny Pokémon would return to the EX era, this time in the form of Pokémon Star. These cards featured light accent foil around the edges of the art box, as well as the iconic Golden Star next to their names. As I've mentioned, Pokémon will continue to do crazy things with the reverse foil patterns, and here's the exclusive prism-like foil used for reverse hollows from the EX Deoxys set. And here's the unique reverse foil pattern that they used in EX Emerald. This one is kind of similar to the old energy pattern from Ruby and Sapphire, except this time they are tiny foil Pokéballs instead. Emerald also added a unique basic foil energy card design, for the first time directly available from a pack. These energies have long been called Matrix energies by the community due to their light resemblance to the code in the Matrix. EX Unseen Forces would give us a Pokéball pattern in reverse again, but unlike Emerald, these ones are in 3D. It's hard to fully describe the optical illusion without seeing it in person, but this is another one of those cards that I would truly describe as holographic. They pop out of the card. We've talked a lot about how this era is experimental, and by far one of the biggest examples of that comes with Delta Species Pokémon. These differently typed Pokémon from the land of Holland have a refractor pattern over just the Pokémon itself, and a gold border. Speaking of Holland, the Holland Phantom set gave us some more special foil energy, this time with the lightning-like storm pattern across the card. We also began to see more special holo energy from the League promos that were given out around 2006 and 2007. 
I don't think I've seen this foil type used since. It has a wild mix of wavy reflections and tiny pixel light dots throughout. And how about another foil energy? As a final gift from the crazy hollow adventure that was the EX era, we got another foil energy from Power Keepers. These ones feature a larger grid of dots that fade out in the background. And with the end of Gen 3 comes the fourth gen block with Diamond and Pearl. Instead of EXs, our new special card would become the Level X. These cards really emphasized art that pops straight out of the confines of the box. Like EXs, they have a silver border, and they often feature a special hollow detail on the character itself, such as hollow eyes or teeth. Also, this era was when the trend of set name stamps on reverse holo cards finally ended. It was also around this time that we began to see a new holo pattern in League promos. This etched or crosshatched style of holo was used for years over a variety of organized play promos, from Pokemon to Energy to even prize awards. Like I briefly mentioned earlier, Rising Rivals gave us Rotom and Sharon's Choice cards with the cracked ice holo pattern. Unlike the legendary birds we saw earlier though, this pattern was used in a reverse hollow style. And the end of the diamond, pearl, and platinum era gave us one special last pattern from God itself. Arceus has a special subset within the, well, Arceus set, which features a ripple pattern going alongside the text of the card. If you aligned multiple cards together, the ripple would extend out from one card to the next. The next decade give us new cards with Heart Gold and Soul Silver's Pokémon Prime. These short-lived special cards featured close-up pictures of Pokémon with torn-up frames, gold names, and once again, silver borders. HGSS also gave us the incredibly ambitious Legend cards. These cards feature foil and gold embroidery across the entire card, they have to be lined up horizontally, and they require two separate cards aligned together to complete the picture. Shiny Pokémon once again make their return at the end of Gen 4 with this final set, Call of Legends. These cards don't have any unique holo pattern, but they do contain a unique, never-before-seen holographic silver border. <laughs> okay, I don't think there's anything new about them, but it just felt weird to not include them. Call of Legends did give us a foil version of my favorite energy of all time, though. These Heart Gold Soul Silver era energies feature important gold and silver Pokémon and locations as silhouettes behind the appropriately typed energy. Moving into black and white, we finally have a new holo pattern! For the first time in over a decade, our new main pattern features horizontal stripes. From Gen 5 onward, each new generation would introduce a new pattern of foil for its basic holo cards. Black and white would also introduce a major recurring trend, Full art variants of cards within the set, featuring art and foil that covered the entire card. This would start with Black and White's Reshiram and Zekrom, and in general, these full art cards have a grainy texture that you can feel when running your hand over them. In Noble Victories, full arts would also extend to include supporter cards as well, and they've become a staple in collecting ever since. The Black and White sets would also begin a new pattern for secret rares. While there are a few exceptions to the rule in the beginning, like this Meowth, most secret rares from this era are shiny Pokémon. They have a lightly textured large energy symbol over the card text on the bottom half of the card. And finally, starting with Emerging Powers, we'd finally get a new type of Reverse Holo pattern, featuring multiple large energy symbols scattered throughout the card. Reverse Trainer cards would do the same, but with a Pokéball pattern. This Reverse pattern would stick throughout the rest of Black and White and X and Y. And finally, and possibly our busiest year yet, 2011 kicked off a brand new trend with McDonald's promo cards. We've seen some simple promo cards with stamps before, like the Burger King ones, but this new McDonald's line gave us a brand new confetti-like foil pattern. They've been using the same pattern now for promo cards every year for almost a decade now. We've seen special powerful Pokémon cards for nearly 10 years at this point, but Boundaries Crossed gave us special powerful trainer cards with the Ace spec. These cards featured foil red and blue text, as well as a nearly full card holo treatment utilizing the horizontal stripe pattern across the border. And finally, in Next Destinies, we get Pokémon EX. Capital E, capital X, uppercase EX. At first, these new EXs featured only legendary Pokémon. These cards have foil borders that are full of extended art, background foil, and particle effects. They would also continue the trend of full art ultra rares going strong as well. The Dark Explorer set debuted Secret Rare item cards. They have a similar pattern to the Secret Rare shiny Pokémon, but instead of shinies, they feature golden versions of previously existing items. 
Just like many other things in black and white, this would become a trend for years to come. The Plasma Storm set would give us a brand new form of evil team Pokémon, this time themed around Team Plasma. These cards have a faint Team Plasma logo in the text box, as well as the unique blue card border. And in the specialty set to close Gen 5, Legendary Treasures give us a crazy new type of secret rare, featuring art of Zekrom and Reshiram that make them look like they are made entirely out of gold. This type of pattern has only been replicated a couple of times. Phantom Forces gave us a similar diamond-colored Dialga secret rare, and we also had a return to gold with Ultra Necrozma in Dragon Majesty. Oh yeah, and they also did a similar full gold treatment with the Hidden Fates Tapus, where they added a little bit of color on the characters as well. Legendary Treasures also give us the first Radiant Collection subset. They're most recognizable by unique shapes, such as music notes and hearts, absolutely covering the cards. Starting with X and Y, we got a new main pattern that reflects light in a diagonal line across the card. I call this pattern Sunlight because it looks like beams of light are falling down from the sky across the Pokémon. Just like the video games, the X and Y TCG set gave us Mega Pokémon in the form of Mega EXs. These cards feature golden text boxes, a lot of foil, and giant foil letters with the Japanese word for the featured attack on the card. Funnily enough, the Japanese cards use English letters instead. Flashfire would also begin the very short and extremely disappointing, uh, worst secret rare golds ever pattern. I don't know what to call it. What made them so bad? Here, I'll just show you. Here's Mega Charizard. Now here is secret rare Mega Charizard. It seriously might take you a while to spot the difference, but there's just the tiniest amount of extra gold in some of the text borders. They're pretty bad. The same way we saw foil blue borders for Team Plasma, we also got a couple of special Team Flare tools in Phantom Forces that feature foil red borders. This is by far one of the shortest gimmicks in the Pokémon TCG. Their official name is Team Flare Hyper Gear, and I think there's only two of them. Next up is Ancient Trait Pokémon, which began in the Primal Clash set, which had special abilities and featured large hollow foil art that covered most, but not all of the card. Collectors typically call these three-quarter hollows because they aren't quite full arts, but they're close. For the second time ever, Breakthrough gave us cards that were intended to be played sideways. Pokémon Break are instantly recognizable, featuring all gold characters and a unique checkerboard foil in the background of the art box. Breakthrough would also give us a much better secret rare pattern trend. These secret rares all have gold borders, full art, and each card features multiple Pokémon that hang out behind or alongside the principal character art. As the hip children of today might say, these are squadron goals. While the same reverse holo pattern would keep on trucking through the X and Y generation, Steam Siege gave us dual-type Pokémon, which led to some pretty cool dual-type reverse holos, splitting the energy foil right down the middle. We'd also see a return to Radiant Collection with the second subset in Generations. Once again, all kinds of fun, completely unique foil patterns emerge, with shapes like snowflakes, sweets, and even a magic castle. These collections truly are some of the most distinct holo patterns we've ever seen in the history of the game, and I hope we keep getting more like it. But before we get too far into the future, how about one more throwback into the past? The Evolution set contained reprints of mostly art from the base set, and to celebrate it, they recreated the original Stars pattern from 1999. It is distinctly different, though. It's a little lighter on the pop-out effect, but it's also a lot bolder and easier to see. Here's Charizard and Charizard side-by-side -side from 1999 and 2016. And now that we're in Gen 7, we get another new main pattern. It's subtle and similar to Gen 6, but with wavy streaks instead of straight lines. I like to think this was made to resemble the waves of the Alolan shores. Or maybe they just thought it looked cool, what do I know? Sun and Moon also breaks a long reverse hollow trend by giving us something slightly different. It's still energies and Pokeballs, but this time the design features one huge stamp to the left and tons of smaller ones to the right. The capital EX EXs finally retire here as well, making room for the new Pokémon GX. These cards feature special one-time attacks to replicate the Z-moves from the games. They have a lot of stylistic similarities to the EXs with card art, but they're most noticeable by their clean borders, which feature a silver foil and a thin black strip. We'd also later get the Tag Team GXs, which featured multiple Pokémon on one card actually fighting together. 
New gold item cards came in Sun and Moon, sometimes even repeating gold cards that we got in black and white. The difference with Sun and Moon cards is that this time even the item cards have a full art treatment, with gold foil from top to bottom. A few years later in Unified Minds, they'd also extend this gold art treatment to stadium cards as well. And even the energy went gold, with gold borders and shiny marks for these secret rares. At the time of this video, these are the most expensive foil basic energy in the history of the game. The mini set Shining Legends gave me one of my absolute favorite cards in the game, this special Mewtwo secret rare. Dubbed Mewtube by a lot of collectors, this card has a subtle texture and foil around the tube, and a rainbow foil over Mewtwo itself. I've talked about this card in the past, but like I've said, the camera really just doesn't do it justice. It is one of the best looking foil patterns they've ever done, in my opinion. And around this time we also got another new company-based foil promo pattern, this time a sequin style foil that became exclusive to General Mills products like cereal and fruit roll-ups. I have a soft spot for these cards because I got to do a promo stream for them on the front page of Twitch, where I was asked to eat cereal and open Pokemon cards. Crimson Invasion gives us a small variant to Hollows and GXs with the new Ultra Beast subtype. These cards feature a black and crimson foil accent in their effect boxes, particularly with the GX cards. Almost 15 years ago we had the Pokemon Star, but now in 2018 we have the Prism Star. These cards, which could be Pokemon, Trainers, or Energy, all feature mirror foil over the Prism rule and the main icon at the bottom of the card. Each card also has an entirely black border. Toward the end of the Sun and Moon era, we got this massive subset, so big that it was bigger than the actual set. The Shiny Vault in Hidden Fates gave us a ton of cards featuring shiny Pokémon. These cards have gold sparkles and textured starbursts that are similar to the Rainbow Secret rares. And Sun and Moon would end with a bang in Cosmic Eclipse, giving us one final secret rare that is one of the absolute coolest. These cards all feature important trainers throughout Pokémon's history, alongside the Pokémon they're representing. These cards have a full art foil treatment, except for the border, which remains the classic plain yellow. And finally, the time has come for the present. Sword and Shield give us a new standard holo pattern, this time looking similar to black and whites, but vertical instead of horizontal. The new reverse holo pattern continues that same theme of Pokéballs and energy, but this time it's in the form of tiny banners that stack vertically. The specialty Pokémon card of Sword and Shield is Pokémon V and V Max, representing the Gigantamax feature in the games. These cards have black foil borders, black accents, and a giant black V in the top left corner of each card. I've made the joke a hundred times already, but I still cannot believe that they have made V cards. That will never not be funny to me. Rainbow Secret Rares also return, although this time they have much more color and texture than the Sun and Moon versions. Also, for the first time we see Rainbow Supporter cards, not just Pokémon. And finally, to continue with Pokémon's mad obsession with bling, Sword and Shield continues to dish out the gold. The pattern this time around makes the entire card gold, background, text boxes, empty space, except that main item or character. Starting with the newest set, Rebel Clash, which came out just as I finished the script, this gold treatment also extends to Pokémon cards, which also feature, for what feels like the 20th time today, shiny Pokémon. And that is everything, at least so far. I'm sure my list isn't perfect, but it took an insane amount of time to catalog everything, and it was a massive nostalgia trip going back through the entire history of the Pokémon trading card game all at once. I hope you enjoyed this more laid-back and relaxing style of video. If you saw a card that you particularly liked or remembered, let me know your favorites in the comment section below. As always, thank you for joining me on this channel's wild adventure through games in the digital space and on the tabletop. I'll see you guys again next time with more gaming content.